In this video, I'm going to be taking my first look at the Monport Reno 65 Pro CO2 laser machine. Hey everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and today I'm going to be taking my first look at the Monport Reno 65 Pro CO2 laser machine. Right now, the machine is still in the crate in front of the table. Let's check it out. I'm taking a look at the machine while it's still in the shipping crate because this desktop machine is so huge, including the crate. And a lot of questions are going to be about whether or not this will fit through a standard doorway. So let me take some measurements and we can see if it will fit through your doorway. The width is going to be 32 inches. The length comes in at 44 and a half, and the overall height is going to be 18 inches. It may look like this is running downhill, and it is. That's not an optical illusion because this crate did get a little bit of damage on the way to the laser channel. And on this side, there is a kind of a lift skid, and on this part, uh, that board is missing. We're also going to see up in this corner, there is some tape and that is because this corner of the lid peeled back a little bit during shipping. So the shipping company had taped that back on. I of course took the cover off right away to make sure that there is no damage and everything looks good. And speaking of everything looking good, let's get the cover off and check out the packaging material to see just how well this machine is packaged. On top, I've got the piece of honeycomb, some nice white packaging foam. This looks like it's over an inch thick. And here's our first look at the Reno 65 Pro. It has more of that thick foam wrapped around all of the edges, and I can almost guarantee there's going to be foam underneath the machine. The bag is wrapped up in a nice bag to keep any dust or debris off of this, so when we take it out, it's going to be perfectly clean. Sitting next to the machine, we get a scale of just how big this machine really is. The rest of the pieces and parts that come with the machine are actually going to be stored within the work area of the machine. In just a second, I'm going to get some help and lift this out of the crate and up onto the table. Now, speaking of moving this, whether the machine itself or if it's still in the crate, it is going to take two people to move it. That's because the base machine just by itself is going to be something like 89 pounds. And I would guesstimate about another 20, 30 pounds just for the shipping crate itself. Some quick math tells me that the machine, while it's still in the crate, is going to be well over 100 pounds. In just a minute or two, I'm going to get some help to lift the machine and get it up on the table. Before that though, I'm gonna prep it and I think this will be the easiest way for my help and myself to get this moved. I'll slide that board right underneath. Get the other board slid underneath. And this way, when I get the help, we can just easily grab it from either end and hoist it up onto the table. With a little bit of help, the machine is up on the table, and I just wanted to show you one more time just how big this shipping crate really is. All right, I've resisted the urge to act like a wild pack of hyenas and just rip this bag off and tear into the machine. However, I'm going to remove this bag carefully. That way I can use it as a dust cover when the machine is not in use. And I know that we're all excited to check out the Reno 65 Pro, and many of you have been asking for a comparison video with the Reno 45 Pro, and that is going to be the next video coming up. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that notification so that you know when that video comes out. One last thing I'm going to do before we tear inside the machine and check out all the included accessories is I'm going to take some measurements off the actual location of the foot pads that way, if you're spacing out for a solid workbench to put this beast of a machine on, you'll know the actual footprint of the machine. Let's measure across the front first. And outside to outside on the foot pads is going to be a little bit bigger than 38 inches. And the depth is going to come in at 
just over 25 inches. And now it's time to check out everything that's included with the machine. Inside the shipping crate, we of course have the laser machine, that honeycomb that we saw at the very beginning. There's a water pump, some knife standoff blades for when we're doing a lot of cutting in lieu of using the honeycomb, safety goggles, two meters of exhaust hose, two hose clamps, a manual focus gauge, USB drive, an Allen wrench key set, a T-handle for setting the bed height and focus inside of the laser machine, two rolls of double-sided tape, power cable, USB cable, and of course, an updated user manual, which actually has some pretty good information now on setting up using and some basic maintenance for the Reno series laser machine. Always so satisfying to remove the protective wrap off of a brand new laser machine. All of the Reno machines, whether it's a standard version or this pro version, has a nice updated contemporary look to it. The front aluminum and aluminum side panels give it a nice look. The back and the bottom side of the machine are going to be steel construction. Inside, the construction is mainly steel with a few aluminum pieces. The linear rails are neatly tucked inside of these channels to help keep them cleaner longer. That way I spend less time cleaning and doing maintenance and more time creating projects with my laser machine. All right, we checked out the machine. It looks really nice. And I'm gonna go over some of the technical specifications on the Reno 65 and a couple minor comparisons to the Reno 45. I'm gonna start with the work area of the Reno 65. It comes in at 16 by 24. When we take a look at the Reno 45, that comes in at 16 by 12. Or another way to take a look at it is to turn the Reno 45 up on its edge, and then we'll see that it is half the work area of the Reno 65. So twice the work area with this larger machine. Of course, the power level being at 65 watts of CO2 power is gonna give us a lot more cutting action and a lot faster engraving speeds. On both the Reno 45 and the 65, the Z axis or the up-down motion is going to be four inches. When we move on to software compatibility, there is going to be a difference between the cheaper standard Reno machine and this slightly more expensive Pro version. The standard version is going to be compatible with Core Laser, Whisperer, Laser Draw, WinSeal XP, Laser Art, Meerkat 40, and many others. Essentially, the standard version is going to run software that we commonly see with a K40 CO2 laser machine. The Reno Pro is going to be compatible with the ever popular Lightburn software, Auto Laser for PC, and Top Wisdom Laser for mobile app. For those of us with the Pro machine who are going to be using Lightburn software, I first have to install the Auto Laser software that's found with the included USB drive. There's going to be a driver in here that is going to allow Lightburn software to auto detect the machine. On the Reno 65 series, it's my personal opinion to ditch the water pump that comes with the unit. This is perfectly fine if you just got your machine and you just want to check out a couple things, make sure everything operates all right. A clean bucket with some distilled water and this will kind of get you going. But my recommendation with this machine having a larger work area, a more powerful laser tube, the machine's going to be running longer and a bit harder and that laser tube is going to generate a whole lot more heat. So it's my recommendation to use an active chiller, something like this CW5200 series. This active water chiller will allow me just to run as much as I want with the Reno 65 without worrying about overheating the water running through the laser tube. This water chiller is going to take a little under two gallons of distilled water and I always like to add a little bit of algae growth to keep the water cleaner and lasting longer. When we switch over to exhaust, it's always a great idea to exhaust all the smoke and smoke fumes out of the machine. It's gonna keep 
the work area that we're in a lot cleaner. It's also going to keep the inside of the machine a lot cleaner. Now the Reno 65 that I have, the back exhaust port is going to be four inch and that's a lot more compatible with the ducting and inline fans that we find within the United States. Now the fan that is included on the machine itself, I think it works okay if you're just using the two meter length of hose that comes with the machine. Just like we see here, I've got the machine and right behind me is a window. And if this is all I'm doing for the run, that's gonna be fairly adequate. However, if I need a longer run of the exhaust tube beyond this, I do highly recommend an inline exhaust fan to kind of boost that flow once again, keeping the inside of the machine much cleaner. Next up, I'm gonna share a couple things that I do when I first set up a laser machine and before I even connect the water chiller up to the machine, I like to remove the cover over the laser tube and do a quick visual check to make sure that everything on the laser tube looks good and that it didn't get damaged during shipping. And as we saw earlier in this video, this machine is very well packaged and my laser tube looks great. I'll set up the water chiller and I'm gonna have this placed on the ground behind the table here just to free up more space and then to cut down a little bit on the noise. These don't make too much noise, but I've got a good microphone and it seems to pick up everything. The chiller's connected and powered up and everything is operating correctly. The Reno's powered up and let's check out the inside. I've got two full length lights to either side of the machine. And right here, I've got the adjustment screw for adjusting the height of the laser bed, which puts the laser in focus. And here's the T handle that we saw at the beginning of the video. Very convenient way to raise and lower the laser bed. Here's a cool look at the laser head. We can also hear the air assist pump is already running along with the internal exhaust fan. So that's correct. As soon as I power up the Reno machine, the air assist pump and the exhaust fan start running right away. When I'm ready to start a laser project, I can easily position the laser head in the correct spot with the help of this red dot guidance laser. When I go to set the focus, I have this focus assist tool. It's magnetically actuated. I'll pull the plunger down and now with that included T-tool that we just saw, I'll raise the honeycomb up into that plunger and when it snaps up, it's in perfect focus. Now I'm ready to start a project. The last thing to check out on the Reno is going to be the display. It's equipped with a 2.4 inch color LCD screen. Multiple functions can be directly controlled through the panel, such as movement positioning, pointing, preview, start, pause, parameters, and a whole host of other features. The controller adapts a seven segment S-shaped acceleration and deceleration curve and adaptive speed planning algorithm while supporting one-click setting of speed parameters and small circle speed limits. Different cutting parameters can be selected for different shapes and reverse clearance compensation is also supported. This is already programmed into the machine and is invisible to us users. This is the fanciest way of saying it's fast and precise. The Reno also supports USB 2.0 interface and supports computer USB communication. The Reno Pro supports Wi-Fi communication. Again, this is on the Pro version only. Thanks for joining me in this video. I had a lot of fun sharing my first look of the Reno 65 Pro with all of you. And I hope that you'll join me in the next video where I start creating some projects with this machine and comparing it to the Reno 45 Pro, doing a direct comparison with some engravings and cut testing. Don't forget to show this video some love by giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. And until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.